Regarding threefold, let's start talking about it a bit more. What are you guys trying to do in terms of this uh, peer-to-peer open internet, open network? Great. Um, it's okay if I quickly just divert a little bit, just to talk about some yeah. of the challenges because it would be sure. great to put it for context. Um, the internet has grown exponentially, and I think nobody expected it to grow this way in the last 10 years. In fact, I, in fact, we're seeing what's happening with this massive growth, billion people coming on board in 2025, and you have you know, 70 billion devices coming online. Nobody even anticipated how Facebook would grow to 3 billion users, right? It's insane. But what we don't realize that the underneath of the tip of the iceberg is basically that there is a massive consolidation happening at the back end of the internet. So if you really follow the applications and go beyond all the wires and cables, you get to really the engines of our internet. And we call these things these data centers. And so these data centers essentially are huge warehouses full of computers, you know, floor to ceiling, and they're manned by a lot of people. And this is the way we know how to deal with building our, our public clouds. Today, it's like three companies that own 50% of the global capacity, which is nuts. You know, 20 companies own 80% actually of all of our data center capacity in the world, which means big tech has become massively powerful. And I think, Brandon, you know, you've seen all these situations that have happened in the past with our data, we are a product, we're being manipulated with behavioral data analytics constantly, are our, our, our actually the way we're putting all our eggs in a digital basket in these, in actually in these data centers, also not very secure, it's very vulnerable. If you look at what's happened recently in, in recent times with the conflict in Ukraine, you have the first things that sort of get attacked are data centers, you know, attacks, whether digitally or physically. This is the backbone of our society. But the only way we know how to do it today is let's build massive, big warehouses. And that's not really the issue is not really with the small, let's say, small uh, boutique data centers, but it's more that's being consolidated and owned by a few big companies. And so here's the dilemma. So you have this security issue with this model, right? Uh, we try and put it in these big bunkers or in mountains or in tier three, and you try to secure it as much as you can. But at the end of the day, there's vulnerabilities in being able to get there through cyber attacks, which have cost hundreds of billions of dollars you know, over the years. We've had issues where people get, get paid off in the data center, human error, all kinds of things where you have physical uh, sort of contact with that. And it makes it super, super available, uh, vulnerable. And at the same time, most countries, don't even want to use public clouds owned by these tech giants because why would they hand over their information for their future and their bright minds in the hands of other companies? So we have a serious sort of dilemma of how we're gonna scale in the future with our information. And the second thing is really, I would say scalability. If you look at the global map today of where these big giant data centers live, they live essentially in most power, modern, you know, very um, well-to-do countries. They're not in emerging markets and developing regions. And they essentially are given just long pack cables to get to these data centers. And what does that mean? The further away you are from the data center, the more expensive you pay. Uh, the, the worse the, the actual service is, the latency increases. And so you have townships in Africa paying factors more for internet capacity than somebody in a city, which is absolutely inhumane. It's incorrect. So this is another factor that limits us. So why don't we just take service and start moving them around? Well, the problem is they're like, they're like babies. You need to feed them. You need to take care of them. You need to watch over them. They're not just hands off. And I think the other thing that we really see as a huge challenge is the environmental issue, which is these things take 10% of global energy today. We take a cluster of all data centers and forecast how much energy they can take in the future. At the rate of growth, we're looking at something like maybe 25% of global energy. We're in an energy crisis right now. So I think these challenges are under, under basically underpin a lot of the things that we're trying to resolve as people. And I think maybe to tie it in how it all fits in with the model of blockchain and the model of, let's say, the original internet, is that Web1 was a really cool place. You just had computer networks, right, connected directly to computers. You read static information, but it was point to point. Then Web2 came along and we got this client server architecture where everything goes to the data center and you have the central control of information. And I think Web3 came along with the hope to help decentralize a lot of these elements. And I love that. More contracts you know, cryptography seals, ledgers, all of these great things help create a lot of consensus, even better governance models. The problem is that it's also shared architecture. So if you try to resolve the cloud problem, the storage problem, the operating system problem, it's not very scalable as a multi, you know, to reach billions of people. And so you have to maintain that ledger as a blockchain. Uh, you have to have certain things that are, are constantly public. You need to have consensus in other ways that are not scalable in this model. So how do we resolve this is what we went back to the drawing board and we sort of 
took a lot of um, note from the original internet in the sense that, like a Napster model, point to point is so much more efficient. And everything about IT today is asking for immediate access, local access. Give it to me next to me. You know what I mean? I need to have my sensor and my data center really, really close to each other. So we started working around that model. And what we ended up doing is building over the last, I think, it's close to eight years, but we've had predecessor technology that we brought on board in storage and optimization and basically created a new operating system, which basically runs completely in a decentralized way. It's the first of its kind. It's built off of Linux, uh, but, you know, just like basically drivers and that's it. And from the get go, this this decentralized operating system runs autonomously. It doesn't have any state. You don't download it into the physical infrastructure. It doesn't sit in storage, so you don't have to manage it or maintain it. All it does is essentially expose the building blocks you need to build a cloud, storage, compute, network. And we're adding now GPUs, by the way, which is super cool.